This is section 9.7 continued. The cat has left the room and we're just going to go on with number 13. So in number 13 we see the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power pi to the 2n over 2n factorial. So thinking in terms of strategies, the first thing I want to do is notice this negative 1 to the n and say, hmm, I could use alternating series test. So is that something I should do? I would need to be able to establish that the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n equals 0. Now I look at this and I just don't know how I would accomplish that. I mean, there might be some way to do it. Um, I can't do L'Hopital's rule because I can't do derivative of factorial. So I don't know, that's not really looking too promising. So uh, that got me thinking maybe I should try the ratio test instead because this limit is hard to do. That's hard, all right? Maybe impossible. So, but ratio test is really set up for factorial. So like when I see these factorials, factorial makes me think um, it might be good to use ratio test. So let's try that. So um, for a ratio test, we need to find a limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of uh, a sub n plus one over a sub n. And as long as that is uh, not one. So what does that have to be? There has to be a finite number or something. I never have these things handy when I want them. Yeah, or it has to be less than one or something. I think it has to be less than one. Yeah, that's right, because it's like a it's like a geometric series. So it has to be less than one. That's what I want to see. All right. So um, how will I find out what that limit is? I want it to be less than one. To remind myself so I don't forget. I have to look it up again. All right, so I'm going to start with limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, I'll drop the absolute value and I'll just look at these uh, two parts separately. So I have, um, actually I can do that anyway because everything's positive here. So I'll just start with limit as n approaches infinity. Of um, So I need to look at what I, what I get for n plus 1. So that would be pi to the 2. I could go parentheses n plus 1, but just to cut down on the uh, clutter. I'm going to call it 2n plus 2. I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom. We're going to call that 2n plus 2 factorial. All right. And then I have to do times 1 over a sub n. So my a sub n is just this. I need to flip it over so I can put it in the, have it in the denominator. So I have 2n factorial over um, pi to the 2n. And that looks fairly promising because now I'm going to have limit as n approaches infinity. Let's see. Um, if you think about how this is going to be like 2n and then 2n minus 1 and then 2n uh, minus 2, this is going to be 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n times 2n minus 1. So everything below 2n is going to cancel out. So my denominator from these two is just going to be um, 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. That's the denominator I'm going to get from canceling those two. You can work that out a little bit if you want to be sure. And then I can look up here and say, uh, with my pi's, if I just subtract the exponents, the two n's cancel, and in the numerator just have pi squared. Now look how easy that is because the numerator is uh, bounded and the denominator is increasing without bound, so that limit is equal to zero. And that's what I wanted for, um, for a ratio test. So I can say... Um, that uh, limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n equals 0, which is less than 1. Therefore, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n pi to the 2n over 2n factorial. Now, remember what we get from ratio test is that it converges absolutely Right, which means that you, even if I didn't have the negative one, it would still converge. And but then we have another theorem that says a theor series that converges absolutely also converges. So I can say and therefore converges. And that's what I get for number thirteen.